Welcome back to The Tracy Show, and on today's episode, we're hopefully going to finish up TLC, but, you know, it's probably going to be this video and the next one. I'm just going to go ahead and say that, but you're looking at the last two videos probably here and there. All right, so with this video, we're going to talk about a different version of TLC, and this is going to be called 2D TLC. So, one point or another, someone in a laboratory decided that one direction was not good enough. So they took a TLC plate and they basically mark a starting line down here and they put a sample on it. And the sample is developed just like normal, just like we've talked about already. It's still the same stationary phase, still the same type of mobile phase, still the same concept of TLC. There's no difference. But it migrates, and let's say that the point migrates to here. And I'm going to color that one blue, just so that we can kind of keep track of the drawing when I begin to do the next step. All right, so after the development, right here, I've got a mobile phase front. And this mobile face front, I'm going to mark. So I'm going to put MP there. And this is the first round of TLC. This is typically what we would do. And at this point, what would happen is that we would take the plate out, draw the mobile face front, and then we would put this thing under a UV light box or put some type of indicator on it so I could see the spot that gets developed. But we're not done. In 2D TLC... The D stands for direction. So we have two directions that we develop the plate in. So this is how this is different. What happens is that we turn the plate 90 degrees. And then our new plate, which has already been developed really the first time, I'm going to draw a dotted line here. That dotted line now goes on the bottom, and we have our blue dot that has migrated already from the point of origin. And the point of origin has started here. And then here's my mobile face front. Don't ask me why this is going crooked. Let me, let me try this again. I promise you it's not my eyeballs. Well, maybe it is. All right, so once this gets turned a different direction, we then put this TLC plate into the chamber again. Now, number one, it can be the same chamber, meaning the same mobile phase, right? That's okay. Maybe the TLC plate that we have, it just needs to be taller. It needs to be bigger. And we just need to give it more time for it to separate. And maybe this is okay to use. However, the second option here is it gives me a chance to change the mobile phase. And this is really good for complicated samples. If there's multiple components in my sample, then it's complicated and there's a lot of spots that might begin to separate out and the 2D TLC really plays a part in these complicated mixtures that we'll see. So then I'll lower this back down into a chamber, I'll put the lid back on it, I develop it again just like I did the first time and this spot will begin to migrate and I might see a different migration pattern or maybe at this point it will turn into two spots, right? Or maybe in the beginnings, if this was a complicated sample, we would get a second spot here. And that second spot maybe would be right here when I turn the 90 degree plate around. And maybe that spot will go into three. Well, you get the idea here. This is for a complicated sample most of the time that has multiple components in it. One direction will separate the major components with each other. So this is going to be my number one separation step. And maybe there's a cluster of compounds in that area. 
and a cluster of compounds in this area that are very similar. And the problem is that they haven't separated, not fully. They've separated from each class, but there's a group that's still where this purple dot is located and where this blue dot's located. Well, by turning the plate 90 degrees and putting it back into a development chamber with maybe a different mobile phase, I now can take this family and this cluster of compounds that were together, that were very stubborn, that really weren't separating from each other, and I was able to change the mobile phase up so now I get these multiple components that can come through the sample. And you know, with these, we can calculate our F factors on them as well. We won't. Uh, that's really more than what we need to do in the class. But if I was working in a laboratory that was doing a 2D run, then I would calculate retention factors or retardation factors for every single one of these that would show up in the first step and in the second step. So the key here, two directions, the second direction is 90 degrees, so that way you can use that point of origin down here at the bottom and you allow these things to separate again for a second time and maybe clean the sample up. Notice that over here I started in the corner of this big huge long plate and the reason is because you want to start in the corner because this first lane that develops here, that very first lane will be your point of origin when you turn it 90 degrees. So when you flip this guy over on the side, that way your point of origin originally was here and that new lane can be your starting point and that's where it can develop up through a second time. That's why we didn't start it in the middle. If we did, the middle would start here, it would go across, and we would have all this wasted space that's down here below. And you don't want to waste all of that TLC plate uh, when you can have uh, a much better separation and fill the plate a little bit better with just going offset in the corner. So here's another picture of a TLC plate. Uh, here X is going to be the sample. Uh, that's my unknown. I don't really know what's there. And the A, B, and C are the standards that I'm using for the analysis. Uh, so with this setup, I've basically put this TLC plate into a TLC chamber. And I've looked and see how A migrates, B migrates, and C migrates. And then my unknown sample will migrate as well. And it looks like in this example, the unknown has the A portion in it. So I can kind of assume that A is present, but I just really want to make sure that there's no other major problems that's going to exist. And notice that they also spot standard up here at the very top, A, B, and C. And they stop the mobile phase before it reaches those spots. And the reason is because this is going to be our second run. So they're going to take this plate from B and they are going to turn it 90 degrees. Now in this video or in this slide, this rotation is going to happen right-handed. So after you dry it, you rotate it 90 degrees, and now the X here goes on the bottom. So these three spots here are basically the first three standards that were ran in the first direction, right? We're no longer going to worry with those anymore. We're now going to look at X, and we put this plate back down into the developing chamber, here are my standards that are spotted again. And when those develop, A goes up, B goes up, C goes up. And now it looks like there's also A that's present in the unknown. Uh, so I can kind of say, well, in the first run, it looks like A was present. In the second run, it looks like A was present. But, you know, here this little spot it looks like that could match up with B as well. And that's kind of maybe the take-home message that I would uh, report back to somebody to say, listen, the first run, it looks like it was just one component only. But we turned it 90 degrees, we did a 2D TLC, and it looks like that spot has now went to a second spot. So there's actually two components in this mixture. And if we just stopped the first time around, we would have never picked up that extra contaminant or that sample that was present 
that was given to me in the lab. Now, here's another version of a 2D TLC. Uh, and this is something that I would not definitely give you on a test or in a laboratory to do, but I want to show you that things just aren't textbook perfect every single time. We lie to you if we make you think that things are textbook perfect, and they're not. So if you look at these spots, some of these are traditional textbook spots, like the one that you're seeing in the bottom right-hand corner, and some of these are a little bit oval in shape, and some of these are a little smeary in shape. But, you know, that's okay because 2D TLC will maybe help us make some decisions with this. We're not going to get things perfect every single time all the way through. So this TLC plate is basically a separation of different lipids. Uh, lipids are very similar in structure, at least some of them are but there's many different families and groups that's in the classification of a lipid. So when I put a lipid onto a TLC plate like this, it could be made up of completely different types of compounds. And I can do my first direction, which is going to be here, and I allow this to kind of migrate upward. And then I'm going to turn this plate around 90 degrees, and then these spots will migrate in the other direction. Uh, and then through this migration, what we're basically seeing is a uh, extra spots that are basically happening from my complicated mixture that I'm running. Uh, over here to the side, they've labeled these just in case you're curious on what these are. And those abbreviations are over here to the side. So this is just really your point of reference. I don't need you to memorize this kind of stuff, uh, but it just kind of gets your uh, bearing straight when you look at the TLC plate and wonder what they ran. Uh, down here at the bottom, notice that the first mobile phase was chloroform, methanol, and water at a 75, 23, and 2 ratio. And then the mobile phase 2 was chloroform, methanol, acetic acid, and water. So they added a fourth component and then they changed the ratios up. And they went to an 80, a 5, a 13, and a 2 instead. Uh, so again, the whole concept is change the mobile phase. You can actually change the way that things begin to separate. Also notice that the chloroform, methanol, and water mix. Uh, chloroform is a halogenated compound. Methanol is an alcohol. And water, of course, is very polar. All three of these are very polar mobile phases. So that probably would say that in this TLC plate, it is separating lipids. Uh, this is a strongly polar mobile phase. And as far as the stationary phase goes, it's probably more on the nonpolar side. And that would make sense since we're separating lipids here, which are traditionally very fatty, very organic, uh, very carbon-rich types of compounds. So that's the idea or the concept with 2D TLC. We don't do it in our laboratory. Uh, you will rarely do it in a laboratory, but it's out there in case someone wants you to do it at any point in time. So now you know what it is. So I've got one video left, I promise. There's probably one video left. Uh, and this is going to talk about a way that we can quantify a TLC plate. So stay tuned. Go ahead and watch this last video. You won't be disappointed knowing that you've got your whole weekend maybe ahead now because you finished this out.